r slash ask reddit what's something your employer did that instantly killed employee morale banned smartphones in the break room to force us to talk to one another and build camaraderie ends up we didn't like each other that much how is that allowed it's your break they can't force you to do anything on your break can they that's not technically true employers can ban their employees from anything I got fired from a factory for violating their smoke-free workplace policy, which extended to tobacco use at home. To aid in enforcement, employees were also banned from off-site lunch breaks. This was in Illinois in 2014-15. No raises or bonuses this year due to company performance, but I will make it up to you by taking the whole company to the lake for a trip on my new 30 feet boat. Business had been running for 3 years and many of the employees had been there from the beginning without getting a pay rise. After some requests the company announced that there would be a review of everyone's pay. Called in each worker to discuss. Basically they had decided to pay every employee the same amount. This meant that a few got a raise. Most stayed the same. And some. Who had negotiated better at hiring. Had their wages reduced. Needless to say most employees were unhappy. Two weeks later the three brothers who owned the business bought themselves two new cars and a second hand Rolls Royce. That was a real slap in the face. In a very short span of time. They changed everyone's 401k plan. For worse. And then implemented an office wide cleanliness policy. No eating at your desk. Only three personal items on your desk. Everything labeled. No items other than your keyboard mouse and monitors on your desk at the end of the day talk about pissed off you could feel the gloom when you walked in everyone's give a shit a broke at once might have cleaned out the employees as well my work just gave me a desk and they actively encourage decoration and personalization it's ridiculous your work would ask you to limit the space that only you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis letting employees personalize their shit is a free way to keep morale high Large factory, not unionized. Each department clocks in at a different place. Mainly that department's break room. My department clocked in across the facility from the main entrance. Which meant it took about 15 minutes to walk from the front door to where you clocked in and out at. And another 5 to walk from that entrance to the parking lot. There was a side exit that we would use. However, that literally cut that walk down from 20 minutes to 3. Since our department was right next to the parking lot, management decided that all employees must enter and exit through the same door. Which meant we had to walk all the way down to the main entrance and then back around to our cars. There was so much rebellion from the employees in our department that they had to bar the door shut with 2x4s. Jokes on them. Even unionized employees can be a pain in the ass. We contacted the fire marshal, who upon seeing a fire exit barricaded, fined the company $8,000. We still were not allowed to enter through this door, but they stopped trying to stop us. Jesus. Do you work at Auschwitz? Who barricades their own employees from exiting a door? Harris and Plank, owners of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. To cut costs. They started a policy that only certain departments had internet access. It basically started a class system that bred resentment across departments, and caused an exodus from the non-internet teams. Ah, the internet. I have heard tales told of this precious and rare commodity, but if you ask me they're just legends made up to pass the time and fill the children with awe and wonder. I worked for a concierge company owned and run by a crazy lady. We had contracts with buildings and she'd routinely lose the contracts by taking meetings with them and then acting crazy. She was actually banned from one of the buildings that we still had a contract with. Anyways, I worked at a building with about 4 other people. We were basically security guards checking in guests all day and we didn't make much money. After hiring this shitty employee who basically wouldn't do his job and instead surfed the internet right in front of the guests. Rather than firing said shitty employee, they took away our internet access. This made employee performance worst as now everyone had to stare down at their cell phones. Instead of straight ahead at the computer. Even I would occasionally get caught staring at my phone instead of the guest in front of me. Some people are quiet as hell. So then they banned our phones. Which, banning someone's phone basically just means that whenever a supervisor is present, which was about 5 minutes per day nobody was on their phones. 
and the rest of the time it was phone city all day every day. This was like a month long battle and most of the 5 person team we started with ended up quitting. But guess who the one dude that didn't quit was? Original shitty employee who I know continued to ignore guests and stare at his phone because I stayed friends with some people in the building and would stop by from time to time. Always catching original shitty employee staring down at his phone. My boss is looking to retire in the next 3-4 years. He told everyone that he wanted us to come up our visions for the company and its future over the next 5, 10, 20 years. We're a small office of about a half dozen people but we've been growing and so everyone brought up growth projections and succession planning once he retires, etc. His son is the heir apparent and has a precocious 8 year old so in my 20 year version I even included the grandson joining the business and grooming it to become a legacy company. My boss went last and we were expecting something acknowledging some of our thoughts or at least an expression of appreciation that the company he founded would live on well past his retirement be in good hands, etc. Instead it was brutal and short. It was something along the lines of I do everything around here anyway so I should just sell the company to fund my retirement and you can all find other companies to work for in a few years. A mood killed. Meeting ended. Everyone quits that same year and he can start his retirement early. Why a why? In a company of 6 people, owner said in a meeting with everyone that his 2 sales guys are irreplaceable and that the rest of us are just paper pushers. He now runs a company of 3 people. Sales guys put maybe 20 minutes into one deal, then operations puts days into logistics, payment, paperwork, claims, etc. We also just purchased an office building for 1 million dollars plus. So if we leave and sales can't sell sell sell, this place will most definitely end up deep in bankruptcy. I'd hate to see that happen. But it's not the first time we've been informed that a scum and just suck up company money while the sales guys are the ones making the profits. I had a very good sales guy at a company I worked for. The guy was like 3 levels above anything we had there before. And he was very much in that mindset of talking about sales like hunting. And I could totally get that. But I told him if you're the one doing the hunting, then we are the ones doing the gutting and cleaning and cooking. And everybody needs to eat. We were once in the middle of a very stressful period of work, and everyone was feeling it. However, one afternoon, an offhand comment turned into a conversation that we all got involved with and led to a few laughs. My manager, returning from a meeting, piped up oh we've finished tomorrow's work. Have we? What's all this about? Insert subject matter. Entire team instantly deflated. Unnecessary. Every employee needs time to blow off a little steam. Former teacher. The administrators at my school were usually pretty chill, but had a habit of randomly coming up with minor rules that they would enforce for us. Male teachers had to wear ties even on jeans day, etc. Overall it wasn't bad. Except for the time an administrator made a crucial mistake. They banned staff from drinking coffee in front of students. Now if you've never worked in a school, you'd think this isn't a big deal. When you spend nearly 100% of your day in front of students, it definitely is a big deal. First we tried to find any loophole we could. Energy drinks. Banned the next week. Tea. Banned two days later. It was chaos. Eventually, we realized they couldn't fire an entire school's worth of teachers and aides. So we ended up doing the one thing that private schools fear most. We formed a union. Realistically, it was more of a weird pseudo-union focus specifically on civil disobedience regarding the coffee issue. But it ruffled feathers nonetheless. The administrators caved to our demands, allowed us to drink coffee again, and even bought each of us a reusable coffee mug as a gesture of goodwill. And that's the story of how a handful of school administrators almost accidentally created a teacher's union over a complete non-issue. Removed cola raises each year for all employees and implemented a raise when promoted or take on more responsibility model. However promotions are very rare and raises are never approved. So everyone is losing money to inflation each year and they tried to sell it as a big win for the employees. We aren't stupid people. And companies wonder why employees leave after 3 years. No one knows. It's a mystery. Shrug. I think it would be funny to hand in your 2 week notice alongside with resume and cover letter for exactly the same position. With perks written in. 3 year experience in this exact position. 
Only request readjusted salary on the interview. Oh, and if asked why you left your previous job, my employer refused to adjust salary for inflation. Fired the girl who was in her third trimester of pregnancy three days before her maternity leave was to start. My wife was let go after she announced her pregnancy to her manager, and approximately when she would need maternity leave, she was told that they'd rather replace her than deal with a pregnant employee and all that goes with that. A well-worded letter from our attorney got her one year's severance, and two years medical coverage for her and the baby. Head of department realized that we weren't about to meet our targets for the financial year, completely banned annual leave for three months. Forced anyone who didn't fill in their timesheet on time to attend disciplinary meeting. Despite problems with the system meaning that some didn't get filled in, and generally had lower management terrified. Causing a massive blame culture and several people to be signed off with mental health issues. In the end, the employee survey which went to his bosses was hilariously bad. And he's now somewhere else making some other people's lives a misery. The best part was when his replacement came in and fired his right hand man who was also a dong. All companies need employee surveys for this reason. Even if corporate doesn't read it. It's great fun to watch managers kiss ass for a week knowing their review is approaching. My company had an anonymous employee survey this past year and when the results which reflected negatively on the GM manager, were revealed. Everyone had to sit through a 4 hour meeting where, line by line, our GM asked why do 50% of you feel this way or 60% of you not like this? No one really spoke up, it was supposed to be anonymous. So we just got told how if we felt that way, this is why our feelings were wrong. By the end of the 4 hours most of us were like was that supposed to deter us from rating negatively next year. So we don't have to sit through a 4 hour meeting about how we're not right in feeling the way we did. They banned phones, electronics, puzzles, books, etc. From being used at your desk. I work at a call center. We were expected to just sit and wait for the next call to come and distraction free. Even if it was a super slow day. They banned phones at my work, contact center, and any device with a camera as I work in government with public info. I now set up a Nintendo Switch and Rock Maria Kart or Zelda between calls as there is no camera, no way to connect to a browser and no voice recording. I'd call it a bit of malicious compliance in a way. As someone who has worked at a few call centers, are they nuts? That work can be mind numbing. You need something in your hands while you repeat the same instruction for the 400th time. Told a bunch of people they were going to be promoted to get us to do extra work. No one got promoted. I basically did her job for a month. Me and three of my co-workers quit and she got fired a few months later. My job has been doing that to people including me. They pass people over for promotions and say but if you do all this extra stuff it'll look good for the next one. Meanwhile managers promote their friends basically. Had a boss everyone loved. Then she got transferred to another store and the new guy that replaced her decided the schedule that we'd all gotten used to needed to be shaken up. He posted the next week schedule that was completely different than it had been under the previous manager. Got a bunch of complaints from people saying they can't work x days or y times and it seemed he was receptive since he took that schedule down. Then suddenly bam. He just reposted the same exact schedule and said duck everyone. Oh. We had some people calling in sick from time to time under the old manager. But this new manager has pretty much half his crew every single day calling out because of his shitty tactics. Here's the first thing to learn about being a good manager. You don't need to shake things up for people to be better workers. You don't need to put your mark on anything if it's working just find the way it was. A grocery store I worked at for just about 4 weeks or so in 2000 did that. The manager, who primary employed high school seniors like myself, would state your employer is your number one priority. You work for them, not the other way around. I don't care about whatever teenager slash high school things you have going on. If you can't work the shifts I want you to, I don't want you to work for me. Only job I straight up walked out on after he told me I couldn't get off for my own graduation. That's the best. I love it when employers try to be shitty to high school students. They never realize that high school students don't need them at all. They still live with their parents and most of the time don't have any bills to pay. Maybe just a car payment and going out to eat if you're unlucky. 
Plus just about anyone will hire a high school student since they are usually willing to work for next to nothing. Put up a poster that said complaining is like vomiting. You feel better but everyone around you feels sick. The morale was already bad but it was just a shitty way to take a hit at upset employees rather than do anything positive. Complaining is like vomiting. Something caused it to happen. And it's best to figure out why and change it so it doesn't happen again. I was one of a large number of programmers working on a project at CSC. We had a deadline coming up in a couple months and they overpromised to the client and then asked us all to work extra hard to meet the deadline. And asked us to work 50 plus hour weeks. Which we did. And then some. Some of us put in 70 80 hour weeks to meet this deadline. But once that deadline was met. Suddenly there was another deadline they needed to meet. And another. People got tired. Had lives too led. And scaled back on their hours. Most of us were still working 50 60 hours a week. But not a lot more than that. Once they realized we weren't killing ourselves on their project any longer. There was an all hands meeting where the managers told us that they were incredibly disappointed in our lack of professionalism because so comparatively few employees were now working more than 50 hours a week. One of our harder workers stood up and said, look, I have three kids. I'm driving an hour into and out of work every day. I'm taking care of my family. I'm trying to get presents for Christmas. Write out Christmas cards. Decorate and clean the house for everyone we're having over for the holidays. I'm having a really hard time just getting to 50. And the manager looked at her and sneered. If it wasn't Christmas, it'd be because it's Easter. Or Memorial Day. Or because it's summer and it's nice out. You'd always have some excuse. There was dead silence in the room. When we left that meeting, we didn't talk to each other, but every single worker on that project put in exactly 50 hours a week after that. Then came Christmas, raise and bonus time. Every worker on the project got a 1 stroke 2% raise. The managers got a 5 figure bonus. We were pissed. For management, the pain came after Christmas. First week of the year, 4 programmers had better jobs lined up and quit. 3 more the following week. 5 the next. We homaged 3-5 programmers every single week for over 3 months. It got to the point where the managers had to schedule a meeting every Monday at 11 to discuss that week's resignations and rearrange the surviving staff. Duck CSC. Hello fellow tortured soul from CSC. I was one of the unfortunate ducks who worked at the benefits call center. I was there for 3 years out of pure necessity after being laid off from my job as a junior size admin. During those 3 years was essentially trained to work all the call queues with no extra pay. We were told every year that there was a pay freeze so no pay adjustment if any kind would be made. At the same time. The main floor manager who was an incompetent buffoon who literally knew nothing and was such a moron that he could not even hop on the phone to help during spikes in call volume received a 6 figure retention performance bonus. Every. Ducking. Yeah. After the company split I ended up in the CSRA side doing everything I was doing before plus accounts payable work. No increase. Nice. I lost track of how many times I contemplated taking off my seatbelt and plowing into the back of a 16 wheeler at 80 plus miles per hour on my way to work. After asking for a raise and essentially being told to be happy I have a job and shut up. I started teaching myself front end web technologies and took a front end boot camp course. I was essentially working 100 plus HR weeks between work school and trenching myself shit i found interesting in the web space i was able to leave a few months later and i have never been happier the real kicker when i started my new job i started as an intern i was making more money working one stroke five as hard and with 90 percent less responsibilities as a duck i'm front end intern so to conclude as you so eloquently put it duck csc Started firing people by lining two up at a time and seeing which one they prefer to keep on. Didn't matter if you were there for 20 years or two. Also hiring management from outside and not promoting within which means the new managers have no knowledge of anything that company does in terms of ethics, procedures, or employee status. It has turned this clique type environment into every person for themselves. Very toxic. I once had a retail manager who sent out a memo that we worked so hard and did such a great job this month that she gets a bonus. That went over like a lead balloon. Worked in a deli years ago and the manager promised us a no holds barred barbecue at his place if he got his bonus for the deli performing well. 
he got his bonus and, surprise surprise, we got nothing. Apparently the wife wanted the bonus for their kids private school fees. Doug, you suck. At an airplane factory, manager started rationing gloves, hairnets, masks, and trash bags at the same time we had to go on a 12x6 work week. Like that was gonna make up for the increase in labor. I used to work in healthcare and, as a student, in different production plants where you needed gloves because everything was hot or dirty or because everything had to be very clean. When I started a new job in any of these fields, I swear you could get a good estimate of productivity and job satisfaction as soon as you saw how the glove situation was handled. If you cut costs by going cheap on that kind of protective gear, you don't care for your employees, and they know that. This school wanted to switch to Chromebooks, so what did they do? One summer while teachers weren't working, they removed every single Windows station and replaced them with Chromebooks to be issued to teachers. They were told to figure it out. When teachers came up and asked how they could teach Photoshop, programming, AutoCAD 3D modeling, etc. Admin basically googled their program name plus Chromebook extension and told them see, there's an extension for it and it works. I don't think I have to add that it did not work. They ended up bringing back the desktops for most teachers. I worked at a club in Miami and the owner was out of his ducking mind years of drug abuse. When the housing market crashed obviously people were spending far less going out but he insisted we were all stealing. We had meetings once a week with all kinds of threats. Finally he put in an automatic pouring system for 50k plus. It basically looks like you're pouring drinks from a soda gun. Super boring. The fun vibe and flair we had was totally gone which made sales drop even more. He ripped the system out two weeks later. Boss pitched a sales incentive trip to Cancun if the team hit the goal. My team exceeded the goal. And then they cancelled the trip. Two people quit. I accepted a position with their main competitor. And less than a year later, they closed in bankruptcy. Calm as a beach. A co-worker of mine won employee of the year and was given a free cruise. He won the prize by never saying no to the owner. Which he continued and missed the cruise deadline. He still works there. I work in a big corporate building. The same older lady came by everyone's desk towards the end of the day to collect the trash. Just the sweetest lady ever and every time she'd walk to my desk she'd give me a big smile and ask me how my day was and chat for a minute as she got my trash. Usually I'd dump it in for her. I had some rough days but she has a way to cheer me up and send me home on a high note. I know I'm not the only one either. So then a few weeks back our work implemented a new policy to cut down on trash usage. It's no longer allowed to have a trash bin at our desk and we have to walk across the room and use the community trash to throw anything away. Not a huge deal but the real reason they did it is so they can cut down on cost, i.e. the cleaning crew. Sad to say that I haven't seen Sharon since. Regarding how employees will travel between site A and site B. What if something happens to their kids? They will need a way back here and sharing one vehicle between 8 people makes that difficult. They won't want to come back. They'll stay and work. Um no. Parents will 100% not care at all about what's happening at work when somebody calls and said there's something wrong with their kid. We don't need to invest in group transport. Then we bought a company van that employees don't like. I have to. Company 1. Cancelled the Christmas party and Christmas bonuses for the whole company because we didn't have the money for it. I found out later the CEO and the CTO used company funds to take a week long ski vacation in Whistler instead of doing something nice for the employees. You better believe I spread that evidence air out in the office. Company 2. It's not one specific incident. But my current company in the last couple years switched from guaranteed permanent employment for anyone who worked there long enough to a system of permanent contract labor for a huge section of their workforce. Rumblings of unionization have started amongst the contract workers. I can do you worse. Company consisted of something like 1200 employees at the time and rented out a big conference center for a Christmas party. At the opening of the party, the CFO was giving opening remarks, and asked, expecting cheers, if everyone liked their Christmas bonuses. He got booed, see, of that 1200 people, 
a bit over a thousand were in customer service, no one in customer service got bonuses, only people in the corporate departments got bonuses, and our awesome CFO decided to rub everyone's noses in it, because clearly the chief financial officer of a company would have no idea that 80% plus of his company didn't get bonuses. At the same party, the CEO made an announcement that the company would be closed on Friday Christmas that year was on a Thursday, and everyone got a day off. Now, he had literally just finished making a speech about how everyone was important, and everyone was part of the company, no matter the department. He had shoveled shit hard, trying to make CS happier. The next day, we all got a memo that customer service still had to work on that Friday. We apparently didn't count as everyone, and the CEO just hadn't realized that the announcement wouldn't apply to anyone. January saw a 60% attrition rate. I told the hiring manager that I was disappointed in one of his hires because he knew literally nothing about our job and asked him doesn't that cheapen my knowledge and expertise? His response, well, let's be honest, you job doesn't really need all that, does it? There were 4 other people my level, with varying fields of expertise, at that meeting, and it got real quiet after that. Small business, 20 employees plus. Boss made a big speech about austerity measures and no raises this year. A week and a half later he drives up in a brand new Silverado with all the bells and whistles. Expense to the business of course. He would hate to have to pay taxes on those profits. One of the less subtle members of the staff took a literal shit in front of his office door. I used to work at an English immersion middle school in Korea. The admin was all Korean. Including my boss. The vice principal. Word started going around that the school was under investigation for certain admin taking bribes to admit students. The VP got visibly anxious for a few weeks. Then one Sunday night we got a text message from one of the Korean teachers at the school. The vice principal has passed away. It turns out he had hung himself in the school lobby that afternoon. The teaching staff still had to be at school the next morning even though classes were cancelled for several days. I remember walking into the school and seeing a custodian mopping the spot where the VP had been hanging. Moral tanked pretty hard for a while. Telling employees that they are going to fire you if you don't make more sales. Then when someone quits tell them no that was just motivation. We were never going to fire you. I was a hard worker, like an extremely hard worker. One day a supervisor asked why I wasn't working at my usual pace. So I told him I was facing homelessness if I couldn't find somewhere to live. He said hey I, I well I really need my superstar out here. I depend on you getting a lot done for me. He couldn't care any less about my problem. I was an employee who made him look good because I got results. And not a human being. I never worked hard again and personally undermined the work ethic of everyone I came in contact with. I didn't have to learn that particular lesson a second time. I work part time at a university library while I attend school. I sit at the checkout desk information desk. My boss, after one of us not saying goodbye to her one night, decided that us college students don't know how to sit at a desk and answer basic library questions. So now she sits down there every other hour and criticizes our every move. When it's the middle of summer and only 7 people are in the library. Shit like this makes me want to quit my ducking job. We can't even read a ducking book at the desk at the library. It made me realize that she takes this shit way too seriously. And that has made me care even less. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.